Dr. Theo Brome, accomplished astromycologist and author of Adventures of Your Penicillium Digitatum, The Mild Kingdom, Fun with Mesophiles, and Keeping Your Temperate, has been creating a sort of inventory of the bioswamp. From new species of bacteria to apex predators like Albert, to apex predator bacteria that doesn't even bear thinking about. It's all being recorded in his little blue notebook. Why am I telling you this? Because if by some random chance, this ship crash lands back on Earth, look for the little blue notebook! Eight legs, photosynthetic, appears to have the choice between pollinatory reproduction and mammalian fertilization. Hello? Good morning, Colin. No yelp. Am I visible? No. See that flower there? The water lily? Well, something like a water lily, yes. It knows you're coming. What? Yes. I've discovered that it leans toward you and quivers when you approach. It's attracted to humans? No. Just you. Just me? Why? Should I be alarmed? Or flattered? I have no idea. I'd think twice before going swimming, however. In that disgusting bog? It's safe from me, I assure you. What are you doing? I keep a log of all the species I find in the bioswamp. As far as I can tell, it's an utterly unique ecosystem. Well, that should make you rich and famous when you bring it back to Earth. Oh, we can't go back to Earth now. What? Why not? With no predators to keep them in check, any number of these species could destroy Earth's ecosystems and the safety system that allows the bioswamp to be ejected. Let me guess. It's broken. No. Oh, well, that's good. It was never installed. Did you want something, Colin? Also, judging by the fact I can feel the puffs of your breath, you're standing awfully close. Oh, sorry. That's generally understood as an invitation to back up. Is it? What can I do for you, Colin? What would you do if you suspected a deadly and terrifying assassin was, uh, interested in you? Why? What have you heard? Damn it. Not again. Not you. Me. Oh. Really? Sorry, um... Which one? The albatross. She started to confess something to me, but we were interrupted. No offense, but is this really important right now? Oh, yes. Well, I realize counting the legs on a mutant mayfly is the most critical thing on your to-do list. So don't let me keep you from it. Hold on. In my experience, and yes, I have experience in this, it's best not to leap to conclusions about what she was going to say to you. It's fortunate you don't have feelings for her, as that could really complicate things. Ooh, a Calipaga and Pulcellus <laughs> with feet. You could just say orchid, you know. Pratt. It's fortunate you don't have feelings for her. <sighs> Damn. In other parts of the swamp, the search for Greg continues, though Jesse and Le Bichon Frise keep trying to pull attention away from the cave. My boy, this is the eleventh time you have gotten in my way. I am starting to suspect you do not want me to look over there. Oh, not at all, Doctor. It is simply that I have searched that area most thoroughly, and there are no zebras to be found. I did not wish you to waste your valuable time. I have to say... Hearing you speak sense is most odd. Surely I was not so great an idiot. I have stepped on half a dozen species in here that I suspect were more intelligent, if less mobile. I must warn you, Doctor. I did not enjoy being insulted. Well then, avoid the freezes at all costs, my boy. <laughs> when you are stupid, you are incredibly stupid. I believe there are some caves over there. Perhaps our friend the zebra has wandered into one and uh, gotten lost. Oh, I did not imagine so. Surely he would call out. Hmm, yes, you have the point. Ah, 
Stumbling around in the brush avoiding the alligators is a job for the younger peoples. Here. Seat. Ah, yes. This is good. Join me. Good, good. So, you will forgive me for intruding, but uh, as your original target, I would like to know your plans aboard the Oz-9. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. That is not information I am willing to share just now. I shall say only that I have reason to allow the status quo to continue for the moment. On this status quo, it includes me uh, still breathing and having my internal organs in the usual places, yes? It does. It is beginning to look as if I shall never collect another fee, nor have a place to spend it if I do. Did not imagine you were all safe from me, however. I have only once failed to fulfill a contract, because I was busy being frozen at the time. So how does one enter into your so unusual profession, hmm? I know nothing of your history. I only know of your formidable reputation. Oh, how do you want to know? Oh, I, I only wish to have a second to catch my breath, young fellow. Nothing more diabolical than that. An old man's pride, you see? And I am naturally a curious fellow. Hmm. My mother was also an assassin. The Greyhound. She was the greatest assassin of her generation. And your father? Well, he taught primary school. Until his death, he never knew my mother's work. Only that he was the only teacher in his school that parents did not complain about. Oh, really? <laughs> well, not twice. This must have been a strange childhood. Hmm, perhaps. But I'm extremely good at getting blood out of carpeting, grout, uh, and car boots. A skill set every child needs. Mon Dieu! You are awake uh, here. Ah, Greg, good boy. You are found. Now, where have you been? Apparently, I was mushroom hunting. Didn't find a whole cave of good ones. Must have dozed off. You sleep? How very strange. It seems this body has an automatic restart mechanism. Woke me right up. <laughs> How unexpected. And useful, of course. I thought so, too. Doctor, can I give you a lift back to the bridge? You're sitting on Albert, and he's a light sleeper. Ah! <laughs> You're kidding me. Oh, that would be most welcome. I'm your freeze. I would uh, like to hear more of your unusual history sometime. Uh, oh, does it look bad? Uh. Of course. However, you know you cannot trust everything you hear. Mm? <laughs> oh, oh, back up. I, I think you missed a ravine. Oh, 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 oh. I landed on my keys. Oh, oh, oh. I think I swallowed Joe's gum. As Greg trots off toward the bridge, with Dr. Von Habesetzer bouncing awkwardly on his back, the Bichon Frise does not follow, setting off deeper into the bioswamp instead. Oi! Rubber duckies! The zebra's back and all is well! You may abandon the search. Please don't stay too long in the swamp, as one search party a month is all we're contractually obligated to do. And you'll be on your bloody own. Oh, hang on. One more thing. I gone, Captain Jesse. Report to the bridge, please. As Jesse makes her way to the bridge, down in the engine room, a pair of familiar heads have finally finished repairing the damage done by Leet way back at the beginning of the voyage. Having one arm, and for quite a while, the chore of sprinting up to reset the bomb every 30 minutes, made progress pretty slow. Plus, every time they made it back from Cal's room, things weren't quite the same as they left them. Hey, uh, what's this here? You've got to be kidding me. I'm not taking this thing apart, Ebret. Again? Hey, uh, what if it's uh, important there? Eh? It's a tiny, tiny screw. How important could it possibly be? Did you follow the manual? I tried, but having to move from Kashubian to Aeolic Greek through Dardani to Pomeranian means a few things get lost in translation. Pomeranian? You mean Polish? No, Pomeranian. It's an extinct West Slavic language. Also, a small dog. Having only one arm meant holding the manuals open with both feet and your nose. 
so it's possible I missed a word here and there. Besides, we have no Allen wrench that fits that size. What are you talking about? There's gotta be 50 Allen wrenches here. And yet. But uh, other than this one little screw, we're done? Other than that one little screw, we're done. I'm sorry, what screw? You're the best, Tater Tot. Now, let's clean up these leaves and go tell the crew the good news. They must be uh, going crazy there, wondering where we are. They weren't. Back on the bridge. You hollered. Madeline. Are you under the furniture again? Hello? Madeline didn't summon you. I did. Right. Well, I outrank you, so don't do it again. I'm heading for a shower. You are definitely more ranked than I am, but I don't think that's quite the same thing. And if you want a shower where you control the water temperature, you might just hang about for a minute. Of all the bloody ships to be next to Maine, it had to be... The only one that survived its apocalypse survived, as far as I can tell. The skies are full of debris and silence. Seriously? 399 ships? All gone? I suppose it's possible some are merely out of range or have even crappier comms than we do. But my guess is we're alone up here and you're the luckiest bugger in the universe. Madeline saved your life. So did Leet and Joe. Is there a point to this? Just that, as you did on the day we rescued your tartan off, maybe you still have your helmet on backwards, metaphorically speaking. And by that, I mean you're looking behind you and blind to what's right in front of you. Yeah, all right. I got it. That was a bloody brilliant metaphor, by the way. Works on so many levels. I didn't realize a hologram could pat itself on the back. Oh, there's lots and lots of things I can do, including altering Greg's memory ever so slightly to keep the peace. Among less benign, benevolent things, do we understand one another? We do. I wasn't going to join him, you know. It was just nice to be wanted. I know. That's why you're still on board. Do it again, and I'll shoot you out an airlock so hard you'll literally have your head stuck up your anus. All right. Hey, Greg's back. Oh, that's lovely, dearest. Maybe we should pop open some swamp pain and celebrate. Oh, since when is synchronized barfing celebrating? Hey, I added Pepto Bismol to the last batch. Where the hell did you find Pepto Bismol? I didn't. I made it. What did you make it from? Don't ask. Ironically, just hearing the ingredients is enough to make you want to vomit. That's just rude. Now that Greg has been located, can we possibly bring everyone to the bridge, please? The swim to the bridge has to retrieve Albert's stool sample. Whatever do we need that for? I don't suppose we do. But it'll get him here at the trot, won't it? Can I collect it? Do you want to? Sure. Oh, what's a stool sample? Oh, sorry. Get out of my way. Don't touch me either. Now, what information are we hoping to gain from Albert's feces? Stop. Someone's hands are inappropriately placed. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. With me. With me. What's the rush? We've done worse chores. Wow. Emily. And, uh... Uh, Howard. Howard. Right. I almost forgot you existed. How delightful. I almost forgot how terrible of a captain. Hey, uh, chair you have. Uh, the uh, popcorn maker's clearly jammed. Are you uh, trying to get a split chair, Emily? Because you're right on top of it. You're nailing it. Oh, yeah. Lee tried to use frosting instead of butter. Really gummed up the works. Can you fix it? Everyone's here. Group hug. Leech. Group hugs usually involve more than two people. I was warming up. Okay, I think we're all here. Why are we all here? I asked the computer to call you. I was in the middle of a rather important experiment. I'm sure. And you can return to it after we've had a very important conversation. Hey, uh, did we uh, miss anything? Miss anything when? The meeting hasn't started yet. We've been gone for ages, honestly. Did none of you even notice? I know I didn't. So, Colin, Dr. Von Habesetzer, and I have made a discovery that might explain a lot of what's going on on this ship. I'm not saying you need to, uh, you know, throw us a welcome back party, you understand? Or, uh, who doesn't like a little, uh, you know, decorative bunting? For example, computer, 
Are you steering this ship? Mm, about 30% of the time, I'd say. Ah. <laughs> so, this is why all the zigging and the zagging. And the upping and the downing and the making me nauseous. So who's in control of the other half? Huh? Never mind. I don't know. I've been trying to trace back the signal, but they've made it look like a manual override in the engine room. So it looks like someone's physically steering the ship? Looks like, yeah. But I have a constant scan running down there, and there's no sign of anything intelligent, human or robot. We've been down there for ages, fixing the engines. Did you notice any intelligent life forms down there with you? We were down there. Yes, that news has already landed on my front porch, thanks. Did you notice any intelligent life down there? Besides you, she means. Whoa. Who might you be, you uh, handsome fella, you? I'm Dr. Theo Brome. I gave you your name, remember? Apparently you've forgotten us, too. Yes, it's Dr. Theo, the astromycologist. While we were gone, I read your book, Weaponizing Mold, Can Chronic Sinus Infections Save the World from Nuclear Disaster? Oh. What did you think? Wait. Sinus infections? <gasps> oh. We must talk. Stop. 287 words ago, I said we had made a discovery. Is anyone interested? Or shall I just go... Uh, my kidneys are ringing. Oh, for heaven's sake. Can you patch them through to the speakers? I believe so. Hello? Odd 9? Uh, are you through? Did you get them? I'm through. Is uh, Frederick handy? Here, my dog. <laughs> dog room. Computer got you, too. Did she? Are you familiar with the others? The original travelers? Yes. We just met them! They ate a card! Oh, uh, uh, I need a shower! I got hit by a leg! It wasn't a leg, just a foot. Julie has a theory. Hmm. That they are using us to get home again? Yes. Okay. Kind of stole my thunder there, but whatever. They took you into the tunnels? Disa, here and Zona. Oh, yes. Yes, thank you for leaving the firecrackers, my Kuivost. <laughs> that actually worked. Huh. I wasn't sure it would. You weren't sure it would work? Guinea pig. I am everyone's guinea pig. I should just learn to drink from a metal tube and shred newspaper with my teeth. Hush, Ben, you're decompensating. Now, how did you escape from them? Is that the rule? Coolers full of chicken parts. At least they told me they were chicken parts, though there was often a lot of giggling, and once I thought I saw a pair of glasses. Oh, my God. Oh, dear. Could we get back to it? So what do we do? Do we take them home? Hang on. You're too far away for anyone down there to be controlling this ship. Well, Olivia, precisely. Huh. Yes, we are trying to figure that out. Give us a moment. <laughs> and why was there a live apocalypse device on board this ship if this is the one that's supposed to survive? Doctor? Yeah, yes? Uh, von Habersetzer. Time to fess up, I reckon. Dad? Dad? Wait, don't even try. You'll hurt yourself. Yes, yes, you are right. Originally, the ship had no Greg, uh, Cal. I put Cal on board. I suspected something fishy was planned for the night. I just didn't know what exactly. So blowing it up was intended as a prophylactic measure. Colin, there are ladies present. And the albatross. What? Oh, never mind. We can talk about that one later. One of the others is aboard this ship. We simply cannot land and subject some innocent planet to such savagery. But it wants to go home. Yes, 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 but why? That appears to be the question before us. Is it simply going home? Perhaps. And perhaps not. Can't we just whip the one we have? Surely we can destroy it somehow. I don't think you can. I found some notes in the greenhouse. Apparently back in the day, the owners of the resort here tried just about everything. Bullets, explosives, 
starving them of water and sunlight? Poison. They even tried chopping at the roots. Turned out to be a great way to get rid of gardeners, but the plant survived just fine. Exactly. We even took a clipping of one of the others and threw it into a machine that simulates deep space. What happened? Oh, it got very big very fast. Broke out of the simulator and ate a gardener. Why was a gardener there? She wasn't. She was planting roses outside the lab. Oh, so sad. Tiberius had bought a very rare Juliet rose bush, and the other ate that too. So can't we just take it home? Well, that explains why you have such a big chest hmm? to fit in that giant heart of yours, Leet. You gorgeous thing, you. Aww, thank you. And such a tiny little head. Uh, the concern is, why didn't all others go. Hmm? Why only one? The ones in the greenhouse show they can adapt to fit conditions on Earth, not just in the tunnels. What are you saying? Yeah. What are you saying? I'm not sure. It is it, all just supposition, but... You think, you think this, this is, is the, the advanced, advanced scouts? Scout to, uh, uh, there you go. It's coming home to bring any survivors still on their planet... Earth. Wow! I really gotta say my earth shattering news fast to get it in first, huh? How much irony is here, eh? All these sleeping people saw they were going to space to find a planet to terraform. <laughs> but they want to terraform us. No! You're joking! Mm, yes, I'm um, I'm afraid it rather looks that way. So, you see now why I wanted to destroy the nine before it could land. But you said they could survive in deep space. What's the point of blowing up the ship? They can, but we believe not for very long. They can survive six months, perhaps even a year. Find an empty enough bit of space, which isn't so hard, no. And they will eventually perish. It was the best I could do. <laughs> are you? Yes, you are. You're laughing. <laughs> oh, oh. Still putting pieces together. We thought there was hardly any food on board. There isn't. The food storage areas are nearly empty. That's because we were going to bring the ship back to Earth. <laughs> oh, no, it isn't. This ship is full of food, brimming with it. <laughs> where? Where? Oh, man. She means the pods. What? Your fellow is quite correct. The rich, the rich people are food for the plants. Ha! Huh. Wow. Sorry. That was super inappropriate. So what was their plan? We take this fellow back to their home planet. It gathers up more of their kind. And they take the Oz-9 back to their new home. Oh, full of plenty of food to get them there since the stasis pods won't work for them. One thing I still can't figure, who the hell is steering my ship? We might be able to help on that one. Oh, uh, might we? I got nothing. When we were cleaning up after our repair job, what was the majority of the debutante? Debris. Uh, leaves. Leaves. It's, uh, it's steering the ship. The plant is steering the ship. Yep. Huh. So, giant plants are coming to Earth to terraform it, and they eat people. This is fine. I mean, I've seen what those things can do to a human body, and it's totally not gross or horrifying or in any way keeping me from sleeping at night. Ah, oh, this is fine. I'm good. I think I need to sit down. Narrator 2 would... Would you mind taking on the end credits? Oh, you betcha. You've been listening to David S. Deer as Dr. Theo Brome, Tim Sherburn as Colin and Emily, Eric Perry as Dr. Von Habesetzer, Joe, and Howard, 
Aaron Clark as Le Bichon Frise and Ben, Kevin Hall as Greg, Shannon Perry as Madeline and Olivia, Bonnie Brantley as Jesse and Donna, Richard Cowan as Leet, June Clark Eubanks as The Albatross, Yuri Alexander as Julie, Sarah Golding as Mrs. Sheffield, Richard Nadolny as your narrator, and me, Kyle Jones, as narrator too. Our music is composed and performed by John Faley. Our artwork is by Lucas Elliott. This episode was directed by June Clark Eubanks. Oz9 is written and produced by Shannon Perry. On behalf of the narrator and myself, we'll see you next time, Space Monkeys. Narrator 2, out. Leet, what are you doing? Nothing. You're eating. No one voluntarily eats the food on this mm. ship. Uh... <laughs> Do I smell lemon? Mm. Goat's milk? Is that Tanzanian chocolate? Maybe? Oh, yes, it is. Give me that wrapper. <laughs> My God. Where did you find this? It was in one of the smuggling holes. Can you actually smell where the chocolate is from? I have a highly developed olfactory sense. I worked in an olfactory once. No, you didn't. <laughs> Candied orange slices dipped in chocolate. Dried mango and... Hang on. <laughs> Minimally processed 60% dark craft chocolate. Wow, you're really good at that. Try this one. Hmm, vanilla bean, obviously. Hibiscus, oh, how very playful. Cinnamon, clearly. I'm going to say cassia. Oh, and definitely chili. Rich, fruity, tangy, smoky, guajillo. Wow, I am really impressed. I can't wait to taste it. Hand it over. Oh, uh... I hate you. No, you don't. I got you the discount. For your tasty treat, go to IntrigueChocolate.com. That's I-N-T-R-I-G-U-E Chocolate.com. Take advantage of a 10% discount from now through November 1st, 2020. Just type OZ9 in the discount code at checkout. U.S. orders only.